everyone. <clears throat> My name is Marcy Lamberson, and today I am going to be teaching you how to make a lampwork glass seashell. These are pretty easy. They're great for beginners, intermediates, and actually they work as a wonderful canvas if you want to do more things with it. But let's start here. I have a 1 16th mandrel, nice and skinny as you can see, and on it I have some blue dip and go blue sludge, which I love. It is the bead release of choice for me when doing sculpture especially. The reason why is that it holds like concrete. And you know sometimes when you're working, especially if your work is asymmetrical, you want some bead release that will hold like concrete so you don't have to worry about it. I've heated up my bead release so it went from gray to white, but you have to make sure it has warmed up all the way, otherwise you tend to get bubbling, especially with the white. So I laid my first part on and I will continue up and I generally make my seashells about an inch or two, an inch and a half, but generally it's closer to an inch. So I'm going to lay down glass and you see that I am melting my glass perpendicular to my mandrel. Goes on a little bit straighter. I still like to marver and I don't really worry about getting things perfectly. But I like to get just kind of it on kind of straightish to begin with. It just makes life a whole lot easier. Once I lay down my base bead I heat it up and give it a little marver and sometimes I work off of my torch mounted marver and sometimes I use this Japanese Kote marver. So what I'm doing is heating it up and I'll give it a little roll. I like this surface because it's wide and it's long. It lets me have a lot of space to marver which I like a lot. So what I'm doing is just getting it so it's on pretty evenly in a slim barrel and I'll start adding some more. This is going to be kind of like, oh, a little bit like a bike cone, but not really. It'll be slim on the ends, a little wider in the middle, and it will be marbled. So when I lay my second layer on, I don't start at the base because I want that slimmer anyhow. I'm just going to keep going up about two thirds of the way. I like these seashells not to be too wide. And the reason why is I'm going to be adding a ruffled lip onto it. And when you add the ruffled lip, that adds a lot of width also. So I like to keep them on the slimmer side. So you see, I only went to about here and started here also. Now I'm just going to heat the side that I'm marvering first. Give it a little marver. Wasn't that easy? And then I let that cool a little bit and I do the other side. And oh, I meant to mention that I'm working with white effetre glass, 104. I tend to work in soft glass almost all the time. And the reason why is I love the viscosity of it when it's, when it's hot. I like stretching glass. It melts quickly. It's got wonderful colors in 104 and it just is my preference. So we gave it a little bit of a marver there. And you can see, it kind of reminds me a little bit of the shape of, oh, remember those old lava lamps? Kind of along that line, a little slimmer than that. Speaking of lava lamps, when you're looking for interesting shapes to make, um, I'm always partial to looking at light sources. Oh, there are a lot of lamps and lights out on the market that have really cool shapes that make wonderful beads. So this glass is Effetre Pink, but what I normally use is Sims Creation is Messy desert pink. That's my very favorite. The reason why I like that one, it's very soft 
um, and it doesn't react because a lot of my seashells are made out of ivory and dark ivory so it won't react against it where a lot of times pink does and you know how it turns gray so uh, just thought I'd mention that okay I'm gonna draw a pink line and it's going to start about from two-thirds it's going to go from about two-thirds of the way up or a third down and then it goes down to almost to the bottom but not quite and I'm going to do two layers of that doesn't need to be perfect and then I'm going to keep the rest of my bead warm but not hot I don't want to see the white looking clear I just want to see it looking glossy as I'm heating it okay so I'm heating from underneath the flame and I'm heating the pink up to melt it in and I'm also heating the other edges around it because what I'm going to be doing is moving that glass over to form the lip and the glass has to have a place to move okay it is melted in I'm taking my brass stump shaper now you can see this one has been with me for a lot of years I wore out the handle on it I'm gonna have to find one that I love just as much I like the sharp edge on it and I do use the rest of it also marvering and I use these sections also when I need indentations so I just thought I'd mention that and while I'm heating my seashell back up I also wanted to say you can find me on Facebook under Marcy Lamberson that's me and you can friend me, send me a note so I know because sometimes I get weird requests. So let me know that you've watched my YouTube station. And also you can find me on Instagram under Marcy Lamberson and I'm on Twitter, but I don't do a whole lot of that. Okay, this is hot, you can see. What I'm doing is making sure it's nice and warm. I see a glow and I'm gonna press in my brass stump shaper and I'm rotating my hand and it see how it made the cut and then formed a lip right there because I put the pink there the pink is on the inside of the lip if it runs over you can always add a little white or whatever color your base bead is okay before we do more with the lip I like to put a little spiral on the tip so I'm just going to heat up the very tip right here and then I'm going to rotate my brass stump shaper around it so it's warm and I'm rotating the mandrel and see how we get this little curvy part like on seashells pretty easy isn't it that one didn't turn out quite as evenly as they normally do but it's okay so we still have this slim line shell and I think I like seashells that have a little bit more of a lip on it I could add pink, but then it would be pink on the back side. So what I'm gonna do is add some white. And if I want to spread that pink out on the inside a little bit more, I could always squish it again if I wanted with another tool. And we will be doing a little squishing also to form it, and I'll show you. So here I'm just adding a little line of white, and sometimes I taper it down at the bottom and on the edges. It depends on where I want more of the lip to be and I'm heating my bead, but not too much. And now I'm checking the back to make sure that the pink is covered. I see a little bit of a line there, which still would look fine, but I'm just gonna add a little white to cover it. And we're gonna be squishing that out, so I'm not concerned about it. But it does add more glass like that, so I know that I'm gonna have a little bit more glass on the lip there. These are concave, convex pliers. You usually use them when you're doing um, beading not really bead making but they're wonderful see how you've got the interior part and then the convex this is the concave and the convex when you squish them together it forms a u or like a little ruffle which is wonderful for uh, wavy bead lips so you just want to be sure you have the indentation where you want it i want the rounded part on the outside and the convex part on the inside so I'm heating up the bead to keep it warm just a little bit and you know that when you look at your bead and it goes in the flame if you have a little bit of a glow then you know it's warm enough but if you don't see a glow then you know that it's gotten a little bit chilly and you need to warm it up again 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to squish. I'm heating up just the lip. And I'm going to take this. See how I'm holding it in my fingers? It's kind of odd, but then I have good control over it. Heat the lip. And I'm just going that far, and I'm giving it a good little squish. The hotter you have it, the more you can squish it. If it isn't long enough, wide enough, what you can do is you can um, you can add more glass. Heat it back up, round it up a bit, and then add more glass on the edge and re-squish. For me, this is long enough. I just want to give you an idea. Now, before I add the final parts to it, because we're almost done, what I'd like to do is um, to talk about some other things. I love seashells in ivory with silver ivory stringer. You can make designs on them, patterns, dots, stripes. They're pretty in pinks and mauves and corals and purples and just about any color you want. These are gorgeous in uh, silver glass. You can do so much with um, seashells. They just kind of are like a canvas for you to use. So what I'm going to do now is make a little bit of a stringer and then I'm going to add some little dots in a few places and then we'll be done. This is so fast and so easy. This is one of my favorite warm-ups for people when I'm teaching. And I do teach all over the place or people come to my home to learn for private lessons. So if you're in the Atlanta area or going to be in the Atlanta area, that's where I'm based, just hit me up on Facebook and talk to me about it because I would love to give you private lessons if you're interested in it. Oh, and while I'm thinking about it, don't forget to subscribe to my um, YouTube channel, please. Okay, so if I want to extend it a little bit more, I'm going to add some little dots on the ends. My glass is nice and warm. It's warm here onto the lip, and then my glass is nice and juicy on my rod. And I'm just adding little dots on the peaks. Just adds a little more. And then sometimes what I do is I'll add little dots going up the edges too. And I tend to do them in order so that they go with the seashell there and then I'll go opposite of that. And I used to, when I first started out, vary the dots so they were kind of here and then here and here and here. They really do line up in the real seashells, so you might want to do that also. Not that any of this is accurate, but it just gives it a little bit more authenticity. So, please check out my channel for a few more tutorials that I have, or talk to me. Oh, and you can also find me in Etsy under Studio Marcy. So here's your seashell, very easy, white with pink. And I hope you're making them as we speak. Catch you later. Thanks. I'm Marcy Lamberson. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube station. Thanks for joining me. Bye.